I'm David. It's truly an honor to uh, share a thought with Home Church today. Um, today we're talking about chasing dreams. And Juliet Harding released a song that she had written. She released it in 2016. And the song begins like this. I've been running, chasing dreams, had my fingers wrapped around these sunbeams. Now I'm certain, yes, I'm sure, you're only alive if you want something more. And there truly is something life-giving about chasing a dream. Uh, some dreams are small, but worthwhile. I dream of one good, uninterrupted night of sleep. Anybody else have that dream? I'm talking about, now I'm very specific in this dream. I'm talking about one night where I go to sleep when I want to, I wake up when I want to, and by God, I lay there until I want to get up. That's a dream right there. So some dreams are small. Uh, most of the dreams we chase are big. Uh, some of us dream of maybe starting a business, uh, maybe getting fit, maybe writing a book. Uh, hopefully we all dream of doing something amazing in the kingdom of God. And it's the big dreams that scare us and challenge us and in fact make us come alive. I'm going to tell you just real quick in a row here five things about dreams. You can just jot them down. I hope you're taking notes today and you're your phone or tablet or whatever. Uh, chasing dreams is expensive. First thing you need to know, it's going to cost you. If you're chasing a dream that's worthwhile, chasing dreams is expensive. Number two, chasing dreams is gut-wrenching. You're going to find out who you are while you're chasing your dreams. Number three, chasing dreams requires soul searching. To, to define that dream and bring it into focus, it requires soul searching. Uh, number four, chasing dreams changes who you are. But between the time that you begin chasing a dream and that you accomplish that dream or realize that dream, you are going to change. It's usually for the best. The last thing I want to tell you in this portion is that chasing dreams is worth it. I've, I've owned businesses. I've, I've been fit before. I've, I've accomplished some financial things. I have chased some dreams. I, I didn't accomplish all of them. None of us do. But I can tell you that chasing dreams is, is worth it. And, and so one thing you need to understand to accomplish your dreams, think long term. Think long term. Uh, as humans, we, we tend to be kind of short sighted. Uh, and as an example of that, I would reference my dream of one good night's sleep. I mean, it's a little short sighted. Uh, we tend to do that. But Mark Batterson, an author I really like, said this. We tend to think right here, right now, God is thinking nations and generations. So when you want to accomplish your dreams, think long term. The next thing is focus on what you can control and not what you can't control. Another way of saying that is focus on the process, not on the end result. If the dream is losing weight and the dream is to lose 10 pounds of weight, I can focus and think about losing weight, which is the end result, but a much more productive way to follow a dream and to chase a dream is to focus on the process. So if I was trying to lose 10 pounds of weight or, or add 10 good pounds or whatever the case may be, instead of focusing all my time on the 10 pounds, I would focus on the process of going to the gym and eating better because I have control of those things. It's not really all that smart to set a dream of losing 10 pounds in a month. You don't have any control over whether you lose 10 pounds in a month. A lot of that has to do with your, your physical makeup, your family history, all of those things. Focus on what you can control. Focus on the process, going to the gym, eating right. Um, and so, so if the dream you're chasing is to do something amazing in the kingdom, I would still tell you to focus on what you can control which is the process. In other words, the, the things that allow you to accomplish the dream in the end are usually the things that people don't see. So if your goal is to accomplish something amazing in the kingdom of God, what would the process be? Well, it's going to be, it's going to be a lot of private stuff before you, you get to do the public stuff. It's going to be prayer. Don't chase a kingdom dream without prayer. Even if you get there, you wouldn't have the integrity and the character to stay there if you arrive there without prayer. So, so chasing a kingdom dream begins with prayer. That's part of the process. Um, it begins with fasting. Okay, my, my flesh has to be crucified. Chasing a kingdom dream, part of the process is fasting. It, it begins with reading your Bible. No matter what your kingdom dream is, 
start with those three basics. I like Psalms 84, verse 11 and 12. I'm reading from the New English Transla Translation. It says, for the Lord God is our sovereign protector. The Lord bestows favor and honor. So, so he bestows those things. They come from him. He withholds no good thing from those who have integrity. Oh, Lord of heaven armies, how blessed are those who trust in you. So, so we kind of see this thought in this verse. I cannot control whether I receive favor or honor. Those are the things that come from God. He bestows those things. So what do I work on? I work on the process. My job is to walk with integrity. When I walk with integrity, it then becomes God's job to bestow favor and honor. Don't try to do God's job. Don't try to just bestow favor and honor on you. You focus on the process. Focus on what you can control in chasing your dream and allow the timing to stay in God's court. Uh, there's a gentleman by the name of uh, Brother T.F. Tenney that, that Nathan and I both had the privilege to meet. If I remember correctly, I think Nathan got to meet him. And he would say this. He would say that it is my job to walk humbly and it is God's job to uh, exalt me. And then he would say this. He would say, however, if I begin to do God's, God's job of exalting me, then God will do my job of humbling me. we got to stay in our role. Even when you're chasing a dream, stay in your role. Don't try to do God's job. I have to focus on what I can control. I have to focus on the process. I have to focus on making sure that my next decision is made with integrity. I have to focus on making sure my next conversation is conducted with character. I will give you a practical tip as well. As well. Read Atomic Habits by James Clear. That's just a real practical thing. Whatever habit you're trying to form, whatever habit you're trying to break, uh, because your habits are going to play a large role in the process of chasing your dream. Just a real practical tip. The author's name is James Clear. The book is Atomic Habits. Read it. Speaking of books, let's go to Genesis chapter 37 and verse 5. And it says, Joseph had a dream. And when he told it to his brothers, they hated him all the more. <laughs> no one hates a dream like a person who doesn't have one. And there's no hater for dreams like a person who's already given up on their dreams. If you have a dream of owning a business and you're working on your credit and you're, you're saving money and, and you're getting debt free and you're getting ready for that dream, you're spending some time writing a business plan. While you are chasing that dream, you need to know this. No one is going to pull you down more than the guy who gave up on his dream of starting a business. I know you guys are in Louisiana, so most of you have seen this. If you put a bunch of crabs in a bucket and one crab tries to climb out of that bucket, the other crabs are going to pull that crab down. They don't know why he's trying to climb out. They don't know what he's trying to accomplish. They just know that he's trying to get above them and they don't like it. So you're going to have haters. Joseph told his brothers about his dream. Now, Joseph didn't start from a very good place because it says when he told them about the dream, they hated him even more. So they already hated the guy. And then he starts telling them dreams and they hate him even more. Uh, it continues in Genesis 37, uh, verse 6. I'm reading from the NIV. He, being Joseph, said to them, listen to this dream I had. He starts it so optimistic, like he thinks they're going to love it or something. Hey, guys, listen to this dream I had. When we were binding sheaves of grain out in the field, we were binding sheaves of grain out in the field, when suddenly my sheaf rose up and stood upright while your sheaves gathered around mine and bowed down to it. I'm sure that went over well, right? His brother said to him, do you intend to reign over us? Will you actually rule us? And they hated him all the more because of his dream and what he had said. Why did they hate him? Because he had a dream and he talked about the dream. If you want people to hate you, nobody wants that. But if you have a dream and you're passionately chasing the dream that God has given you, people are going to hate that you have a dream and they're going to hate that you talk about the dream. Non-dreamers hate dreamers. Okay? It's just a fact of life. But don't give up on your dream because a non-dreamer hates your dream. Don't give up. I love Genesis 37 and verse 9. It says, then he had another dream. 
He didn't quit dreaming because they hated him. He didn't quit dreaming because they disliked him. He didn't quit dreaming for anything that they did. They were his brothers. They were the people he lived with every day. Every day when Jacob got up and started, I'm sorry, when Joseph got up, his dad was Jacob. But every day when Joseph got up and began chasing his dream, his brothers hated him for it. It was constant. It was always surrounding him that people hated his dream. And this verse says, then he had another dream and he told his brothers. I love this. He said, listen, he said, I had another dream. Good job, Joseph. Way to go. I'm so glad you didn't quit dreaming. I mean, Maybe change your approach to your brothers. That's something to look at. But just don't stop dreaming, okay? And so Joseph doesn't stop dreaming. He has another dream. Um, he's, then he had another dream. He told it to his brothers. Listen, he said, I had another dream. And this time the sun and the moon and the 11 stars were bowing down to me. Verse 10, when he had told his father as well as his brothers, his father rebuked him and said, what is this dream that you had? Will your mother and I and your brothers actually come and bow to the ground before you? Verse 11, his brothers were jealous of him, but his father kept the matter in mind. Listen to me. While the brothers responded with jealousy, the father responded with thoughtfulness. Why did the father respond differently than the brothers? The answer, and I love this answer, is because Joseph's father was also a dreamer. Can I tell you something about your heavenly father? Your father is a dreamer. You might not fully understand your dream yet. You might not be able to fully articulate your dream yet in a way that, under, that other people understand it, but please hear me today. Your father is a dreamer, and because your father is a dreamer, he's going to respond just like Joseph's father did. He's going to respond with hope. We get to choose when other people have a dream, whether we respond like the brothers and the, and the bucket full of crabs with jealousy, or whether we respond like the Father. Hey, this is no different than any other area. Let me encourage you, be like the Father. Just make a decision right now that when someone shares a dream with you, you will encourage that dream. You'll, you'll help them with their dream. You will breathe life into that dream and into the dreamer. This is a lesson that Joseph learned as he got wiser. In Genesis chapter 40, verse 7, reading from the NIV. So he asked Pharaoh's officials who were in custody with him in his master's house, why do you look so sad today? Now, the Joseph that we read about before was focused only on himself and his needs and his dreams. But now we find that he's focused on others. How are you today? How's your life going? Why, why are you sad? And, and what can I do to help? This, this is a different Joseph mentally, emotionally, from a spiritual maturity standpoint, this is a different Joseph than we read about just a few chapters before. And in Genesis chapter 40, verse 8, we both had dreams, they answered, but there is no one to interpret them. Then Joseph said to them, do not interpretations belong to God. Tell me your dreams. That is a powerful thing. Yes, it's powerful that he said interpretations belong to God. I get that. But I, what I kind of want you to focus in on right now is he says, tell me your dream. What is it that makes you tick? What is it that, that gets you up in the morning? What, what are you chasing? Tell me about it because I want to hear about your dream. The Joseph that we started with was all about his dreams. And because of the way he approached his brothers and his father and his mother with those three dreams. This Joseph was ridiculed. He was hated. He was sold into slavery. Now we find a Joseph over here that says, listen, why are you sad today? What's going on? Oh, you had a dream? And, and essentially he pulls up a chair and sits down and says, tell me your dream. Tell me your dream. Joseph had been chasing his dream for a while now. As a result of chasing his dreams, he, he'd been thrown into a pit by his brother's uh, he'd been, been sold as a slave. Uh, he finally started making some progress, and, and then he got falsely accused of rape and, and thrown into prison. Uh, but somewhere along the rough road that this dream chaser has traveled, he's learned an important lesson. Listen to the dreams of others. 
Make time for the dreams of others. Zig Ziglar said it this way. If you help enough people get what they want, you will get what you want. I'm going to repeat that. If you help enough people get what they want, you will get what you want. So I'm going to encourage you today to hold on to your dreams. Hold them tight. Hold your dreams with one hand. Leave one hand free to help others accomplish their dreams. Don't give up on your dream. Hold to it. Hold it tight. Make sure that you don't let go of your dream. But at the same time, all of your focus and all of your energy and all of your resources can't be directed towards just your dream. Leave one hand free to help others accomplish their dreams. And so this, this guy, Joseph, in the Bible, he, he accurately interprets the dreams of Pharaoh's butler and, and Pharaoh's baker, and, and one of them dies, and, and one of them is restored to his place beside Pharaoh. And so I'll tell you that Joseph's life went downhill until he recognized the value of helping others accomplish their dreams. Eventually, Joseph becomes more like his father. Now he's, he's willing to listen to the dreams of others. Now he's, he's willing to invest in the dreams of others. It, it's not just about his dreams. He, he still has those dreams, but now he's also willing to help other people accomplish their dreams. And now he's more like his father who listened to his dream years before. Let me tell you today, a healthy dream will make you more like your heavenly father. A healthy dream pursued in a healthy way will make you more like your father. On the, the flip side of that same coin is an unhealthy dream or even a healthy dream pursued in an unhealthy way is going to put more distance between you and your father. There's a quote I really like. It's not clear exactly where it comes from. Uh, it simply says this, to travel fast, travel alone. To travel far, travel together. In chasing your dreams, do you want to travel fast? Do you have a dream that can be accomplished in a week or two? If that's the case, you need to travel alone and get that thing done and check it off your box and, and chase your next dream. However, for most of us that are chasing big dreams, we're going to be traveling far. It's going to take me years to accomplish some. I've got some dreams that's going to take me literally decades to accomplish. I've got some dreams for my family. I won't even be alive when they come to pass because it's for my grandchildren. I've got some dreams in the distant future. I'm going to travel a long way to get there. So if you want to travel fast in chasing your dream, travel alone. But if you want to travel far, if you've got months or years or, or even decades until you accomplish your dream, travel together. First Corinthians 3, 6 from the English Standard Version. Paul speaking here, he says, I planted, Apollo watered, Apollos watered, God gave the growth. A great dream requires a great team. A great dream requires a great team. I don't know all of Nathan's dreams for home church. I've got to hear a lot of his dreams and I've got to hear him and Tiff talk about it. And I hear the hope and I hear the passion in their voice when they talk about it. Let me encourage you to become part of the team that makes that happen. Whatever that dream is, a home church, it's going to go far. And if it was going to go fast, Nathan and Tiff they could do it by themselves in two weeks. That's a small dream. It's not going fast. It's going far. It's going to be years. It's going to exist years from now. It's going to exist decades from now. And, and because they've got a dream that lasts a very long time, they need a team. And, and a, a great dream requires a great team. Find out what you can do. Call him, text him, hit him. What can I do to make this dream of, of home church come alive? I'm almost done here today, but there's something else you need to know. And you need to know this. Who you become while chasing your dream matters more than the dream itself. Who you become while chasing your dream matters more than the dream itself. Joseph never gave up on his dream. And he did leave, live to see the dream that he chased become a reality. But what matters more than that is who he became along the way. Chase your dreams. Never give up on your dreams, but never compromise your character 
to accomplish your dream. Again, remember, who you become while chasing your dream matters more than the dream itself. Uh, I've already told you that your father is a dreamer. If your dream is healthy, he wants you to accomplish your dream. If, if your dream enriches the lives of those around you, your father is all for that. But also don't discount the fact that he has some dreams for you. Don't chase your dream so much that you miss out on his dream. And, and of course, the hope is uh, that a healthy Christian is, is being led by the Spirit, that a healthy Christian is reading and fasting and, and praying and reading his Bible, doing all of that. And, and so the hope is that for a healthy Christian, the dreams that God has for them and the, dream, the dreams that they have for themselves will merge into the same dreams. To bring this to a close, I want to read you one of God's dreams for you. It's a big one, man. I read it often. It's 2 Corinthians 9.8. I'm reading from the Revised Standard Version. Quote, and God is able to provide you with every blessing in abundance so that you may always have enough of everything and may provide in abundance for every good work. God's dream for you is so big that he wants you to have so much that you can provide abundantly for so many dreamers. I, I pray if you're listening to me right now uh, that, that a dream has come more into focus for you. I, I pray if you're listening to me right now at home church that that may be a, a dream that, that you're slightly pursuing, that you will begin to, again, passionately pursue. And I, I pray that, that God is able to provide you with every blessing in abundance so that you will always have enough of everything and may provide in abundance for every good work. I'd like to pray over you right now, home church. God, I pray that everyone listening to this, God, you know the dreams that they have for themselves and you know the dreams that you have for them. God, I pray that there's some dream chasers will be born today. Dream, dream chasers, they think different. They act different. They, they're, they're people of action. God, I pray that some dreams will be born today. God, I pray that some dreams that, that have maybe been sitting in a corner for a while will, will be dusted off and, and put back in a place of prominence. God, I, I pray today that some godly dreams will be born. And God, I pray that you will give them the resources, the structure, and the teams they need to pursue those dreams. We ask all these things in the name of Jesus. Amen.